Hey guys, it's MC Fix It here. We're going to be working on a new disc die. Uh, this is the way. We got a Mando uh, stencil that I've cut. We're going to put it on this rock star. This was in the Disc Mania mystery box. Almost everybody got one of these uh, if you got that mystery box. And so we're going to walk through all the tools, the supplies, how you make this stencil die go right on top of the disc and look really, really sweet. It's going to look good on this one because it is pretty clear and uh, I think it'll look really really awesome and i love uh the mandalorian so kind of a two-fold win here so let's go through all the tools that you need you're going to want a disc i would encourage you to get a white or clear or a disc that will actually receive dye pretty well the darker the disc the harder it is so the white ones obviously are going to work really well you're going to want some kind of Cricut uh, with some 5160. Cut the stencil. The other thing you can do is you can actually tape the stencil or whatever you want onto that 5160. Take a razor blade and cut that uh, or like an X-Acto knife. It's a little bit more time consuming, but totally doable. Uh, this is a transfer paper. It comes in a big, huge roll. You can use this probably 10, 12 times until it kind of loses its stickiness. Fold it in half, fold it in half, take a Sharpie, draw two lines, draw a line around your disc, circle around your disc. Have lots of paper towels, I mean, lots of them. I also normally have some kind of rag as well just to kind of lay underneath whenever I'm doing any type of pouring. You're gonna want an electric skillet. It's actually right over here out of the box. Uh, got that on Amazon relatively cheap. Blue tape is sometimes helpful, especially if you need kind of a handle to hold on to. We kind of just wait and see. If you do, it's just about a four inch piece of tape folded in half. Gives a nice little handle. Dawn dish soap and water is really helpful. Or if you've got a sink nearby, I'm using iDye Poly. There's lots of different options. iDye Poly works really well for stencils. Fill it up all the way full in a mason jar. Put in half of it. Shake it up really well. Uh, you get multiple dyes out of it. That's why I'm not showing you how to do that, but that's the exact process I do. You can see it in a lot of my other videos. Acetone is really helpful to remove the original stamp. Some kind of funnel that just helps pour the liquid back in after you're done. Some kind of scraper tool. You will be pulling at about a 45 degree angle. You can use a, like an old credit card or a gift card or a Kroger Plus card. Some kind of weeding tool. A Sharpie is very helpful and a pair of scissors, especially if you have to open up your pack or if you have a big stencil, sometimes I do like to do that. Have a really old pan here. I've used multiple times. Make sure you're good, cleaned out. I mean, I know it looks disgusting, but I've done so many dyes in this thing. Works really well. Uh, and then you want some kind of work surface that you can get messy because I'll tell you what, over time, especially if you do this a lot, it's going to get a little messy. Uh, you want a trash can nearby as well. So let's go ahead and jump on in. We'll set up our workstation to get everything nice and ready to rock and roll. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get some acetone. Hold a paper towel a few different times and go ahead, pour out the acetone. Should be about the size of the silver dollar and just go over it quite a few different times and it will lift that original stamp right off. You can see how much was on there, fold it over like that. And normally you still have a little bit on there that can get some off. You wanna make sure this is nice and clean. So go to a spot that doesn't have much. Go ahead and get a little bit more acetone. It's looking good right there. And we'll throw that away, scoot that out. Go ahead and hit it up one time real quick with some Dawn dish soap and water. Having a good, nice, clean work surface is always a great option. And you can always kind of still see the original stamp if you hit it at the right angle. I'm also going to just go ahead and peel this off. Next thing I'm going to do, because this should not take as long to weed, I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. This is one of the times I like to get my really nasty old cloth. 
This just helps for spilling. And this is about half full. I shook it up once or twice. Put the lid on tight too so you don't lose it as it sits out in your garage or wherever. You don't have to put a ton in, you just wanna fill the bottom of it and go ahead and put that on. Uh, then I have a couple of marks on this one so you can see it, it's about two and a half and right here's the top. So go ahead and start weeding. Now this is a clear stencil, so this is gonna be a little harder for you to see. So I'll probably just speed this one up. Uh, but if it's got the white one, it has a blue, kind of looks like this underneath, but the white, the clear one has a white one and I don't like that but I didn't make it, so you just go with what you have. Any parts you know that are gonna be hard, I like to just go ahead and kind of scrape it down on there pretty good. Going at about a 45 degree angle. And then once I start weeding, I probably will just fast forward this part uh, just because you're not gonna be able to see much. And so you're just going and you're picking the parts uh, being very careful to only pick the parts that you want to be black. Everything else needs to stay that needs to be white. So for instance, like this parts need to stay white in here. And then you need to pull these parts. You obviously want to leave the little Mando guy. This is a font I found online, Duff font, that literally has Mando already in it, which is pretty sweet. And so I probably, yeah, I'll probably start with this. That's going to be pretty easy to do. Okay, so I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that, but I went ahead and got all of it. Double check to make sure you got all the different parts out because like these two would be very easy to screw up and not get those actually out. Um, but I think that looks really good. Even the little Mando character, that all still looks good. You can see kind of his cape and his weapons still. And so I'm really liking how that turned out. And also, I don't know if I mentioned with this, as soon as it starts to smoke, which it just started to, we're gonna go ahead and turn it off. Uh, it doesn't have to smoke a lot. You do not want it to boil. If it does boil, you need to spend some intentional time kind of making it not. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do because of this being a clear stencil, I probably will spend a little bit of time uh, with some Sharpie on it. So I'm gonna fold just the edges. This will just help me out as I'm doing it. And then we'll fold right here as well. I did get this centered on the Cricut. Um, that's important to do or else you're not gonna wanna do what I'm doing right now. Um, but I did get this nice and centered. And so that will just kinda help me line up everything properly. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that transfer paper right now. And you only really get one attempt in doing this. So try your best to get it as perfect as possible. Okay, once you got that nice and down, we'll go ahead and peel back one of the corners. A lot of times you kind of rip the paper, which is fine. And if any part doesn't come up, just continue to press it down in there. It should come up eventually. This transfer paper has been used a number of times. So sometimes it starts to get a little less sticky. You can also go on the back side of the Oracle 5160 vinyl to pull this up if you're having trouble. Okay. That worked really, really well. So we're gonna go ahead and get our disc. 
And one thing I don't know if I put in the, the, the tools and supplies is this little thing right here. This is just something I built. It's just a piece of plywood with some lines on it. Um, uh, then I printed this off on my 3D printer. It just kind of helps you get a little bit more lined up. Sorry, for the next few seconds, I really do have to be directly over top of it. So you're not going to get the best camera angle because I really want to get this thing lined up pretty perfect. Okay. Again, this is totally optional. But it's something I've had lying around for a while, so I do use it occasionally, especially on these clear ones, because it is kind of hard to see and line them up properly. And now I'm just taking and folding this over on the inside. We'll spend definitely a little bit more time getting it really uh, air bubbled out on the front, but this back, it just kind of is wrapping around it. Also, with wrapping around it with this 12 by 12 inch uh, vinyl, you're going to save any kind of rim issues you might have with getting dye on the rim, which can happen pretty easily. So, that looks halfway decent. We'll go ahead and start making sure that vinyl is starting to stick well. And we're definitely probably going to have to air bubble it out a lot more in a minute but this is just kind of that beginning and you're looking to just make sure all of it is doing what it should all the lettering looks good and definitely before you rip it off on the end make sure you don't have anything on there uh, one of the things i also do with this transfer paper it comes with a white one that looks very similar on both sides so i just use a 5160 oracle this is one of those white ones and put it on there because then i know exactly what side it goes on set everything out of your way and now we're going to spend probably five minutes getting the air bubbles out um, and so you want to be really intentional i'm not worried if the air bubbles like way over here because it's not next to it uh, but you are going to want to spend some intentional time. The other thing I'm going to do, this is still kind of lightly smoking. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off of the burner here and just set it off to the side. And just spend a solid few minutes getting all of those air bubbles out. So once you feel confident that you have got all of the air out, um, all of the air bubbles, everything weeded properly, because this is going to be hard to hold, take about four inch, six inch piece of tape, get a little piece like that and just kind of fold it to where you kind of get yourself a handle. It just helps lifting it up and out of there. And so we're going to go ahead and put this down in. For about five minutes, you can come back and check it at that five minute mark and just let it sit. You don't need to do anything else. You don't need to put it on the heat. Five minutes, we'll be back. Okay, let's go ahead and pull this thing out. We are going to let it drip for quite a bit to try to save as much of the dye as we can. And hopefully this worked really well. It looks like it did so far. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a paper towel on it and lightly go over it. Go ahead and set that down. I'm going to move this off to the side for the next few moments just so I don't knock it over. And go ahead and get that Dawn dish soap and water. Go ahead and spray it just a couple of times. Like I said, you're probably going to need some paper towels. I feel like I use a lot, but I like to make sure everything is nice and clean and as good as I can get it. So now I think is the fun part. Uh, this is that final weeding. So we just take a few moments to just go ahead, start pulling everything off. 
and then we weed out whatever is left, which is pretty much just going to be, I'm guessing, the mass. Uh, I think that turned out really, really, really sweet. Uh, you can see so much of the detail on there. If this was helpful, please like, subscribe, comment. Please help me out with my channel. Share it with somebody. Uh, like to get this kind of spread around as good as we can so more people can know how to dye a disc and make them look really, really sweet. Thanks again.